Hey everyone, and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 39 RK FB. It's been a little while since I've done a video on this model, so I thought I'd give you an update. We're gonna take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV, then we will close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the brand new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 39 RKFB. We're gonna spin our way through the downstairs here and then we'll eventually head back outside. So first things up, this particular unit was ordered in the Juno gray wood with the cool gray furniture. They also offer the decorator white wood and the charcoal furniture. And then there are two different floor colors to choose from as well. The unit comes standard with a really nice hardwood desk right here. Now you can opt in for a second sofa over here as well if you wanted to do so. When you do the desk, you do have obviously six drawers here. It comes with the little chair there that also has an electric outlet underneath the desk so you could set up your little computer area and stuff down there. Nice big windows overlooking the campsite area of your RV. These are deep tent safety glass dual pane windows standard on the Riverstone Legacy. The unit also has the pull down day and night roller shades. So you have a day part, and then you also have your night part as well. Really nice hardwood, stained hardwood. Uh, a lot of brands use a veneer paper wrap, and here you actually have real stained hardwood throughout most of the RV. There is a table and chairs set up here. There's two folding chairs that are available as part of the legacy package, or if you do the regular Riverstone, you can opt them in. There's an Aleph extension that goes in here as well, so you could sit four people here pretty comfortably. In between the windows, there is an electric outlet and USB charger ports right there. On each side of the table, there is some little shelf space down below built in. Really pretty decorative pendant lighting throughout the RV on some of these spots. 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version. You'll also notice the kind of 10 looking roof in your kitchen area. They have black AC returns and uh, dump vents here, whisper quiet ACs on the unit. Then when you get over to the traditional white part of the roof, they use white over there. Currently using the Samsung residential refrigerator, has an ice maker built in, freezer on bottom, refrigerator on top. On the left side here, you have a large pantry area and the lower portion actually has pull out drawers. Overhead cabinet space there above that refrigerator also. Back in the corner, quite a bit more cabinet space here. Quite a bit of counter space. Again, rear kitchen. On the left side down here, there is a little drawer built in and some storage space, but also that's where the refrigerator is plugged in back there in case you ever need to unplug it to pull it out or do anything maintenance wise or cleaning wise. Four drawers, full extending ball bearing drawer, got a drawers. You also have the large insignia oven here. Has the light built in, glass front. You have the little blue LED lights above your knobs. Um, individual on off switches for either the oven light or the blue lights. Four burner stovetop. 
large Samsung microwave here, plenty of storage up above and beside the microwave there. And you could opt in for a convection oven also. It is an option, however, there is a shortage of these convection ovens, unfortunately. So depending on when your RV is built, you may or may not get that feature, even if you order it with it. Um, talk with your sales guy about that type of stuff. Uh, you can always add it aftermarket wise. These things are not real hard to change out the standard microwave for the convection microwaves. Really, really pretty solid surface kitchen countertops. You do have the kind of butcher block cutting board style sink covers here. There is a double bowl undermount stainless sink there, high rise sprayer faucet. There is also a flip up counter extension on the end just to give you that extra little bit of counter space. Now here you have a little flip down sponge holder kind of area, whatever you want to kind of stash there for doing your dishes and stuff. And you also have a little dishwasher. Pretty nice little feature there. Some soft touch light switches over here. Again, looking up here at the ceiling, we have a little infinity light up there to kind of just gaze off into. You also have, again, the air conditioner ducts blowing down through here. You got a couple speakers up here. There is also the AC returns for that whisper quiet AC up here. The unit comes standard with two ACs. You can opt in for a third. Most customers and most of the time dealers usually stock it with three, but it is technically an option. You don't have to get it if you don't want. Also, you can add heat pumps to the ACs, uh, which is a really nice feature that you can use to heat the RV. You always get the gas furnace as a standard feature. The big fireplace down there, which is an electric heater as well. Uh, so you've got multiple ways to try and knock the chill off or heat the RV. But having those heat pumps as a backup is a really nice feature. Again, to just kind of save you on propane if you do like to do that. One of the main lighting controls is located right down there. You can also see the power theater seat button here. There's USB charger port and little lighted cup holders on each arm. The theater seat is completely freestanding. So when you get to your location, you can kind of scoot it out a little bit or scoot it left or right a little bit, depending on you know, what makes you comfortable. The sofa over here makes into a large bed, so you could sleep a couple adults over here if you wanted to. Some overhead cabinet space up above. You have a JBL stereo system in here, basically controlling the two speakers that you see in front of us here, and then also the couple in the ceiling. There's a little bit of storage space above, little flip up glass lid here. And then you have the Samsung Smart TV. This is on a swing arm and can swing out. So you can kind of work on things back in behind there. Propane leak detector down there on the corner, and then you have your fire extinguisher here on the right. Another light switch section there. These little things are temperature sensors for the air conditioners. Opening up here, we have our half bath feature here. And down below, you have a porcelain foot flush toilet with the nicer lid. Little sink area, again, solid surface sink covers or sink here. Nicely lit back mirror here. 
washer dryer stackable setup also. Now this is standard on the Riverstone and Riverstone Legacy model. It is an option on the reserve model to get a washer dryer. So depending on which version of the Riverstone you're looking at, talk with your sales guy about what you might want. Turbo exhaust fan controls. There is a turbo exhaust fan up here. Nice big fan to exhaust out any moistures or smells. Laundry chute comes out here also. Pull out drawer down below. You have some step lights here. Grab handle to get you up and down the steps. And over here, we have a little hidden control area right here. Currently using the Firefly system. Really nice system for an RV. I can turn off pretty much every light except for the 110 lights, uh, basically right here with the touch of a button. Turn them all right back on if I hit the button right. Then you can individually go in here and actually control some of this stuff also. And then you do have some of the light switches throughout the RV. You can also dim some of the lights here by holding the buttons. And you'll know which ones are dimmable because it'll have an up and down arrow next to it as well. Uh, let's flip back. We have some information about the electrical system so you can kind of see what's going on with your voltage coming through the RV. Come back over to the HVAC system here. And this customer ordered theirs with three ACs and two heat pumps. So you can see here, one AC, you got the cool button. Over here, we have our second cool button, but then we also have our heat pump button. Roll on over to the third. We have the cool button, heat pump button, and furnace button. Next, we have slide controls here. We'll get into this when we come back in to close it up. But in the slide control section is also your awning buttons as well. And then you can come back in here for some settings as far as setting the clock and kind of do some maintenance and stuff like that. And go back to the home screen. And we have one of our air conditioner temperatures here. We have our uh, sensors for our holding tanks, our water pump on off switch, 12 volt tank heaters, voltmeter telling us what's going on with our battery. So a few different things in here. Then we have our Truma on demand water pump, our water heater control here. And we have our inverter button. And you'll have some more information that kind of just kind of tells you a little bit about the features. Uh, 24 hour roadside emergency by Safe Ride that comes with the coach for one year. Going on up into the bedroom area here. We have camper king bed over here. The bed does raise up. There is some storage underneath of here. You have a window on each side of the bed. Those do open. Again, day night roller shades on each side. A lot of brands chintz when they get to the bedroom and just put night shades and take away the day part. Saves them a couple bucks. Most people don't ever notice it till after they've already bought the RV. On each side of the uh, slide out there, there's an electric outlet and USB charger ports, both. Also, there is some storage down here on each side and kind of a little nightstand for your drink or phone or whatever you want to plug in there. Up along your ceiling here, you can see pretty nicely finished off. You do have your traditional AC ducts coming out and you also have those cold AC returns for the Whisper Quiet Airs. Quite a bit of floor space here to be able to get up, get dressed, and get your day going. Um, that's nice having these two opposing slide outs here. So basically you have six dresser drawers and some storage space there in the middle. You do have that 40 inch Conexus TV, again, has an FM radio built into it. So you could listen to some music up here separate from the downstairs area if you wanted to. That window again does open, emergency exit window. Hopefully you never need it for that purpose, but it does open. Electric box with your breakers and fuses down there and some storage here. 
spin on back around here to look at the bedroom from the other direction here. Sliding door for privacy here. You have the Cadet electric wall heater here. So one more optional feature there that you can add to the RV to heat it in the cold weather. Now, right here, you heard me mention laundry chute when we were looking at that half bath. There is a little area there to throw dirty clothes down into that section. So besides being a half bath, it's kind of your laundry room. And you can kind of use all your stuff down there, throw all your stuff down there for that purpose. Here is your main bathroom. This is pretty large bathroom here, really nice setup here. But you have six drawers in the middle along with some storage on each side. Double vanity sink, again, that beautiful, nice, solid surface countertop. Huge backlit mirror here. Lighting up above. Another turbo exhaust fan little remote controlled thermostat there on the wall for it. Some more storage space and another little laundry hamper there. Pretty good sized shower here. It does have a little sit down seat. Has the adjustable shower bar. And then you do have a large skylight up above here. Now over here, we have a pretty good size closet area here. When you do the legacy package, you get the Dyson rechargeable vac. When you do the regular Riverstone, you do get the traditional RV dustpan vac slash hose system. King Wi-Fi setup over there, the solar charge controller back there as well. Some hanging closet bars, a little laundry basket down below. Little area to stash some stuff down there. Coat hook holders. Some LED light stripping in here as well. And then over here you have more hanging closet space. Now just kind of stepping back here, you have the porcelain foot flush toilet with the nicer, harder lid instead of the cheap plastic lid. Sliding door here for privacy as well. Overall, not a huge amount of changes from the 2021 version to the 2022. They tried to keep them pretty simple this year. Um, in large part, there were so many RVs back ordered that they didn't want to freak people out too much when changing. Uh, I do picture possibly some more changes coming for the 2023s, uh, which will probably be sometime around like July or August timeframe again this year. Uh, we'll see, but their backlog right now is running currently about five or six months. So depending on how quick you order one, you may end up with a 23 with some changes we don't know about yet. So kind of keep that in mind when you are ordering your RV uh, from your sales guy there. All right, guys, we're going to head outside. I want to show you around the outside and then we're going to come back in and close this thing up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the brand new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 39 RKFB. We're going to start here on the door side, kind of spin our way around. So first things up, this one was ordered in the Blue Thunder paint job. So basically, it's kind of a light silver base with some blue, black, and other grays and pewters paint over top of it. The unit was ordered with two awnings. So you have a power awning on your main section here, and then a second power awning on the slide. When we get back there, you'll see that a little better. The awnings both have LED light strips. They are, again, power, adjustable arms for tilting for water runoff purposes. They also both can manually be cranked in in case of an electronic failure. 
The awnings also have a metal protective wrap shield on them. So when you're traveling down the road or it's sitting in storage, that aluminum metal casing just kind of helps protect that material. This unit was also ordered with these slide out awning covers. And on those slide out awning cover options, it also has metal wrap protection covers on them as well. So a little bit of an upgrade to the awnings over what most fifth wheels offer you. The unit was also ordered again with that four camera system. You've seen that uh, when we talked about it inside a little bit ago, but you have a camera on this side, one on the other side, both pointing down the side of the RV, one above your entry door and one on the back of the camper. So four camera security or viewing system to kind of see around your RV. Back in behind this door here, we have two 40 pound propane tanks. Most traditional fifth wheels come with two 30s. Some of your smaller, lighter weight styles only come with 20s, but here you have two 40s with the auto changeover regulator. And then down below is a gas line hookup where you could plug in like a portable grill or something if you wanted. Also notice how nicely finished off this metal comes down and basically, again, nicely finished off and painted, and you're not seeing that drop Z frame section. A lot of brands, you'll see that steel framing underneath the here because it's not finished off like they do on the Riverstone models. Huge pass-through storage compartment on this model. Tons of space in here, that rubber diamond plate floor, you do have some access panels that are sliding panels to get to things for maintenance and stuff in here. There's also an electric outlet down here. And you can kind of see up here on the decking up here, this is actually nicely finished off, but you can see that steel framework. A lot of brands have aluminum tube framing up here. And here again, that Riverstone's going that extra construction mile to really kind of stiffen up the frame and everything. So you're getting a steel chassis decking up in this area that ties into the main uh, subframe. So much stronger, heavier duty frame system on the Riverstone Legacy version. The unit comes standard with dual pane frameless looking windows deep tent safety glass, but you have two layers of glass, again, dual pane windows, standard on the Riverstone and Riverstone Legacy. There is an electric outlet here. You have thicker baggage doors. Really nice setup here for that uh, extended stay or full timing type of customer, having these thicker, better insulated baggage doors. They also have the slam locks on them as well shock assist here on this side. One other thing while we're looking here, check out the thickness of the body. You can always open up a baggage door on whatever fifth wheel brand you're looking at here. But this is roughly three and a quarter inches thick. R16 sidewall. Most fifth wheels are an R10 or less. Most fifth wheels are only two inches thick or inch and a half thick. So depending on whether you're looking at an ultralight style, um, you know, what you might be checking out, this is way more insulated and again, a lot thicker, heavier duty, more stout fifth wool. Here you have the more ride step above entry step. Quad entrance step comes down, touches the ground, adjustable legs on it. This has the shock assist on it as well, so it's real simple and easy to flip up into the RV. Practically holds itself up. A Little bit wider entry door, has a traditional screen door, but on their screen door, it also has these little plastic or vinyl storm window kind of things, whatever you would call them, removable. Um, not really storm windows, but you get the idea. But basically there's just a vinyl insert and you have a traditional screen. So depending on the weather where you might be, if you wanna to try to help keep the air conditioning or heat in a little bit better, you can do so with these extra little panels here. A 
Up top here, you can see a traditional porch light up here. Just above that porch light is also that extra side camera looking down over your entry door area. Large folding entry handle to help you get in and out of the RV and your model number is also located right there. Now the unit also has six point automatic hydraulic leveling jack system on it. And you can kind of see two up front which help you get the thing on and off the truck. Then you also have two back here and then there will be two more back in the middle or back behind the axles back there. Now, down below, you can kind of see here a little bit, we have 17 and a half inch H rated Goodyear tires. Um, again, 17 and a half inch H rated. This also has disc brakes instead of drum brakes. Now this customer chose to order it with the upgraded More Ride uh, suspension system. Really, really nice independent setup here. Kind of pop up a picture so you can kind of get an idea what that looks like, but it's not a traditional leaf spring. That leaf spring is what is standard on the unit with the option for this really nice more ride improvement system here. If you're gonna travel the country, I would recommend it. If you're somebody that's gonna take it and just park it somewhere and leave it, it's probably not worth the extra, what is, I think it's like six grand or something like that for those axles. But if you are a true traveler, it would definitely be worth the extra investment. You'll also see a little advertisement sticker here just talking about the extra clear coats and stuff that they put on their paint finish just to really kind of smooth out those paint lines. You can really, really tell the extra care they take in kind of trying to finish that off. This one was ordered with the optional outdoor TV. Now, if you don't want their TV, you still get this hole and there are still TV hookups there However, you won't have their TV if you don't want it, and you won't have those two JBL speakers right there. When you order their optional TV, they put in this 40 inch TV. Oh, that TV does have an FM radio built into it, and that is partly why they give you these two outdoor speakers. That uh, TV will run through those speakers for you. I'm going on around to the back of the RV here. You can see a really nicely finished off rear end here. This is a almost motorhome style rear end look to it. Um, nicely done with a heavy duty fiberglass rear cap. You've seen probably, if you follow my channel, you've seen the 3850 uh, rear kitchen traditional Riverstone Reserve that I posted uh, probably a week or so ago. And it had its standard flat back rear end. So when you step up into the regular Riverstone or the Riverstone Legacy model, that is when you get into this fancier rear end of the RV. It does have reverse lights, has a hitch down below that is rated for 300 pounds. It's a two inch hitch receiver. It is basically just rated for cargo carrying or bike rack. It is not a towing style hitch. You can kind of see up top there, the rear observation camera. Ladder comes down nice and low, so it's easy to step up onto and climb up onto your roof and inspect it. The ladders are rated for 250 pounds. Now, speaking of the roof, you can kind of see up here on top, you know, they do come standard with a solar panel. You got your TV antennas, attic vents, plumbing stack vents, air conditioners, all that type of stuff up here. Um, but you got to get up here from time to time, guys, and check that out. Inspect those seams and seals. Make sure they don't crack open from traveling down the road, the road vibrations, the twisting, the flexing, all that type of stuff. Or just overall in general, the sun trying to dry out that sealer. Uh, so get up there, inspect your RV. Very important to do, guys. Um, also, while we're looking at this roof line here, you'll notice that they actually paint down the edging of that roof line. Uh, they use a paintable material. A lot of brands don't. They'll use a rubber or a vinyl that can't be painted and you will have just your white roof material going down there. So you pay for this really nice fancy paint job that you see on the side, but then you got a plain Jane roof running down the edges. So it's kind of nice to see they use a little bit better material that's painted up here. 
Back here in the corner, we have a little bit of storage area. This is under the kitchen counter area here. So mostly used for storage purposes, but you also have your low point water drain for your ice maker and your on off valve for your ice maker right here. Again, thicker slam lock baggage door doors here. Powered power cord reel here. Up top there is stove exhaust vent. It has a little flapper in it when you do get to where you're going and you're ready to uh, store the thing or use the thing, you do want to flip that open. Little trash can area right here. Back in behind here is a little inspection panel also to get to the dishwasher shutoff valve behind there. And you can again see that little hole area to drop stuff down into your trash can if you want to use it for that purpose. I would probably get a little bit bigger trash can though and put in here. I'm just kind of looking down here below. You can kind of see you have your spare tire underneath it here. And also the fresh water tank drain has the larger inch and a half dump valve so it will dump out and drain faster. Up top here we do have a, another security light or scare light they're sometimes referred to. Your furnace exhaust out right here. You have the Truma on-demand water heater here. Black tank flush also right here. You'll also notice you have a large running light here in the middle of your RV. This is also a midship turn signal. Most RVs do not have a midship turn signal. So that is a nice little bonus feature for the Riverstone just to help uh, you know, in your safety of trying to get over, you're alerting the people beside you that you are trying to move around where again, a lot of these, you know, campers don't have that and people don't know that you're trying to get over. So down below here is the black tank flush handle. It's a cable handle. So it is actually up inside the underbelly, uh, nicely closed off for heat purposes. But you also have your dump hose holder box underneath the here as well. The other hydraulic auto level jack there. And also that little black square up there is your dryer exhaust vent. Over here you can see shock assist on the doors here so it does not go up into your bedroom slide out there. Step back here so you can kind of see down the side a little bit better. Again, beautiful paint job on this blue thunder. Now that regular Riverstone Reserve I did a couple days back, that was the new white water. So instead of having a silver base, it was a white base with the blues and stuff in it. So you have a couple different versions of a blue color for this Riverstone lineup. Now inside of here, you have your 1500 watt inverter. Basically that runs a couple of the electric outlets in the RV, also does the power theater seat as well. So if you are trying to kind of boondock camp, you can still recline back and relax. There's also the water manifold system on the Riverstone legacy versions, the Riverstone versions. Um, that right there basically gives you individual on off valves for your hot and cold water lines. So for example, say your half bath toilet sprung a leak, you could come out here and shut that down, continue to use the RV, even though that line may have malfunctioned or something. Little blue hose there is part of the outside shower spray port. You do also have heat ducted down here into your underbelly. Right here is kind of a little trapdoor compartment here. You have the hydraulic reservoir pump and everything for your slides auto level jack. Um, you also have the disc brake fluid holder down there for your disc brakes when you do that feature. 
Now over here is your docking station area. So in the docking station area here, we have a battery disconnect up here. We have our jack controls over here, docking light switch, hot and cold outside utility shower. We have a whole house water filtration system, the black, gray, and bath tank handles here. Remember you have two black handles, that one underneath for that half bath. Black tank flush again here for the front bath. Your water directional valves here to either fill the tank, use city, water, dry camp, whatever you're trying to do. And your cable satellite inlets. There's also some, in, uh, some instructions here on your auto level jack system. Over here you have your battery compartment. And there's room for four batteries. They're on slide out trays, depending on how you want to set up the RV. Um, you know, it would come with two from Couch's RV Nation if you purchase from them. Um, again, you could go up to four. Some customers choose to do the lithium batteries. Uh, Battleborn's very popular. Some customers will do four, six volts. So you can kind of set it up the way you want it. Just talk with your sales guy about that. Up here, we have some very important informational stickers. We're gonna pop these stickers up for you guys. The very first sticker is going to be your main data sticker. And this has production date, axle sizes, uh, some tire size information. But most importantly here on this is the gross vehicle weight information. That's the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Do not exceed that number. Very, very important. Next sticker is your unloaded vehicle weight. This is what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. And it also has the length on it now as well. Next is your cargo carrying capacity sticker. This is basically just telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross vehicle weight. And last but not least is your tire sticker, basically just telling you tire size, but also most importantly here, telling you tire pressure. Very important guys to maintain your tire pressure, also your lug nut torque, um, but basically the RV tires can only hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. If you let that pressure drop too low, it can't hold the weight of the RV properly and could possibly blow out easier. So again, keep up with that, very important. Down below here, you are generator prepped. So if you want to do a generator, you could do so. Uh, there is a generator shortage kind of going on in the RV world right now. So you might possibly be able to have it done at the factory if it's available at the time, um, but it's not always been available here over the last year. But it is prepped standard for a Onan 5500 watt LP generator. So talk with your sales guy about that if that does interest you. There's also another motion light up in that compartment there. You got a little bit of room to kind of stash some stuff on top of the generator box or to the side of the generator box. And then there is a little flapper on the side over here that could open up and there is some uh, wiring stuff back in behind there. Now the unit was also ordered with the Trail Air Ride Pen Box. So here you have the shock and airbag built in. This really helps with a lot of the up and down bounce when traveling down the highway. Uh, really nice feature to do. Not everybody likes Trail Air, some people like More Ride. So you could do aftermarket a More Ride Pen Box or something along those lines if you want. Talk with your sales guy about that, but most people seem to go with the Trail Air right from the factory. You do have a light up here as well. And then it's a little hard to see here in the garage, but you have a really nice, beautiful front nose cap on here, nicely painted and finished off. Um, there's also a couple LED light strips up there as well. But overall, they do a really beautiful exterior paint job feature if you do choose to do that. Um, when you do the legacy package, you have your choice of four paints. If you do the regular Riverstone, uh, it comes with a standard fiberglass, but you could, again could also do paint on there as an option if you don't want all the features of the legacy package. All right, guys, we're gonna go back inside. I wanna show you what this thing looks like closed up. We'll be right back on the inside. 
All right, guys, we are now back inside the 2022 Riverstone Legacy 39 RKFB here. And we're gonna close it up. So I wanna show you real quick what it looks like closed and kind of how that functions. So first thing you gotta do is step inside the entry door here to your main control panel. And again, they're using the Firefly system currently. And we go from our home page to our slide page. And in the slide page is where you also close up the awnings again. But it's kind of color coded and labeled here to tell you what to do. So turning over here, we're gonna look at the bedroom slide. Very important guys, make sure your floor is clean before you go running these slides in so you don't accidentally run something over and damage your flooring. The flooring in the Legacy model, when you do the standard version, is a really nice upgraded floor that has individual tiles, but you do not want to have to replace them if you can keep from it. So that slide came in nice and quick. Hydraulic slide moves nicely. Uh, the next slide is going to be the little closet or dresser slide over here. This slide is the Lippert in-wall slide or Schwintech slide. That one is a 12 volt motor slide. So they do sound completely different and move a little bit differently. Now you can see I can still walk up in here with these two closed. I could lay down, take a nap if I'm at a rest area or something, or if I really needed to, I could climb over the bed into my master bath. You are, however, not really getting to the lower dresser drawers or that center section there. But for the most part, you could still climb up in here and take a nap at a rest area. That's an important feature to have when traveling a lot. I can also come in here and use my half bath without having to worry about climbing over anything to get to the bathroom. Now the downstairs part, we have the slide coming in here. Again, very important, make sure your floor is clean so you don't tear something up. Slide comes in and stops. This is a flush floor slide, just like the big slide we'll be running in here shortly. Um, so it does have to kind of come up and over the subfloor a little bit. Very important to make sure your TV is latched back properly so you don't accidentally hit it and damage it. Also to make sure the sofa, which is freestanding here, that theater seat is back far enough so that again, you don't hit it and damage it with the slide. Now we'll run in the big slide. This one comes in when this is on its way in or before you move it to come in, make sure you remove the leaf guys out of that dinette table and make sure you also put the extension down on the countertop because if not, you will damage the RV. Now I can squeeze through here. It's a little snug, but I can squeeze through there and come right on back here. So I could get to my desk area I can kind of sit down here if I really needed to. Um, you're not really climbing on back into the kitchen area though, unless you're gonna be climbing over the counter. Um, don't recommend doing that, but you know, if you have to, I guess you have to. Easier just to hit the button, takes a couple seconds to open this up. But again, make sure your extension's down and out. And then when it goes back out, it's pretty quick and easy to do. Squeeze myself back through here. And one other thing, we'll stop here for just a second, just to kind of mention this. This again was ordered with full body paint. So you'll notice a difference 
they painted the side of the slide versus the standard portion of fiberglass here, which is kind of a cream color, off-white kind of color. Not all brands paint the sides of their slides when you order them with paint. So some brands, when you open up the slides, it's just plain fiberglass. At least Riverstone does paint it the base color of the RV, so it looks a little more appropriate and not kind of an oddball sore thumb sticking out there. Going on out, again, you can see quick and easy to do here. All right, guys, thanks a ton for watching my RV videos. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you are interested in keeping up with more of my RV videos. Thanks again, guys.